my own. Today I'm going to cover rain shadows. I like my paper like right there. So a rain shadow is when you have a mountain range next to a body of water, like an ocean, and you notice something interesting, which is that on one side of the mountain, it's pretty green and nice. Okay, this is supposed to be green, lush plant material here. It's green and nice on one side of the mountain. Okay, we're gonna have a mountain range that goes up really high. It's with a very tippy top. It's like cold and full of rain or whatever. Uh, snow, not rain. And then on the other side of the mountain, it's gonna be pretty arid and dry. So it's gonna be more desert-like. There might even be like a proper desert on this side of the mountain, okay? So it's dry on this side of the mountain. And so the idea of a rain shadow explains why this happens. So I'm going to put our ocean over here. And with my like amazing ocean drawing skills, there's our ocean over here. And I want to talk about what's happening. So what's going to happen is that air is going to be blowing in this direction. That's just the wind. So we have wind blowing from the ocean across the land, okay? And as this blows, it's picking up water from the ocean. So we're gonna get moist air. And it's moist just because the water's pretty wet over the ocean. So we end up getting this moist air. As this moist air rises up, it's gonna get colder, okay? So it's gonna get cold as it gets higher and higher up. The higher up it gets and the colder it gets, the less water it can hold. So here it's gonna be colder. This is away from the earth. The earth can hold a lot of heat in it. And down here, it's gonna be hotter. Okay, so again, this is because all this land's holding a lot of heat, this ocean's holding a lot of heat. And so it gets colder as we go closer to outer space, higher up in the atmosphere. So this moist air is rising and the moist air is getting colder and colder. So cold air can't hold as much water in it. Think about it this way. This is how I kind of imagine it. I hope that your physics teachers don't kill me for explaining it this way. Cold air is gonna be more uh, dense, so it's more condensed. And I think about it as squeezing out the water as it gets more and more dense. Hot air is less dense, so I imagine that there's more room for water to be held in that hot air that's less dense, there's more space between the molecules. Okay, but don't tell your physics teachers I told you that because I think that that's the wrong way to explain it. So this moisture is going up, as it gets colder, it's gonna start dropping off the water. So here's a little cloud. And as it's getting colder and colder, less and less water can be held in this little cloud. So it's sort of like squeezing out a sponge over this land. Okay, so now when we get to the top, the air is pretty dry. So here it's drier, so drier air. Okay, it's already squeezed out all of its water. So now as the air moves down the other side of the mountain, which we call the leeward side of the mountain, it's starting to get hotter again, and so it's actually able to hold more water. And so what it's actually gonna be doing as it gets lower is it's gonna be sucking up water out of the land, so especially out of plants that are living down here. So this is gonna be dry air picking up water now. So now we have dry air picking up water because it's nice and warm. And so it's actually gonna be drying out everything over here. So again, we get the moist air dumping out water on one side of the mountain the drier air picking up water on the other side of the mountain. So the leeward side of the mountain tends to be very dry.